In this video, we're going to be talking about proper pipetting technique. Now, I that doesn't make sense. Proper pipetting, the proper pipetting technique, or a proper pipetting technique. No, proper pipetting technique is correct. Techniques. Pro no, technique. Like. Say the sentence again. Today, we're going to be talking about proper pipetting technique. Uh, a proper pipetting. No, it's not a. It's a, it's a. it's a. It's a. It's a suite of techniques which makes it. Techniques, plural. Today we're gonna be talking about proper pipetting techniques. Are you sure? First thing you're gonna need to do, you're gonna need to find some pipette tips, right? <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> that was a horrible joke, but you couldn't get pipette tips. You, you just couldn't get any. You couldn't get them during COVID, all right? Now you can get them, but before you couldn't get them, but now you can get them. So we're gonna go through how to prop it how to pipette properly so that you're getting the most accurate results. There's a lot of bad things that come from not pipetting correctly. You're dispensing the wrong volumes. You know, this is the very simple basic part of your assay, but you mess up here, everything downstream from here is trash. And sometimes the reagents and the things that you're pipetting or your sample are super precious. So you get that wrong, that could be a catastrophe, especially for quantitation and whatnot. So the goal for this video is to figure out how to get pipetting right as much as possible. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure your pipetting angle is correct. So here we have a scintillation vial with some water in there. You wanna make sure when you're pipetting, you're going straight in. Okay, you don't want to be going out on a side on the side. This is going to cause issues, right? And then when you come up, you know, it's a good practice to drag along the side. The second thing you're going to want to do is you want to make sure everything is at ambient temperature or consistent temperature because we're dealing with volumes here. So typically colder temperatures will contract the volume, hotter temperatures will expand the volume. So if you want volume to be consistent, you don't wanna be handling some pipette tips by hand and have different temperature fluctuations or do assays at different temperatures, like in a hot room and a cold room, because that's all gonna affect your volume. So pipetting volume is the second thing. The third thing you wanna do is pre-wet your pipette tip. If you can, this is a pretty good practice. So what pre-wetting your pipette means is you put your pipette in and you suck and spit a few full time a few times and that kind of coats or lubricates the surface so that when you actually do pipette your sample you can get a nice pipette you know see that so pre-wetting is a is a good practice the fourth thing is you want to examine for any droplets so when you're pipetting and you like to do a quick dispense you can see there's some droplets in there so sometimes if you're dispensing too quickly, you're gonna have a little bit of residual volume in there. That's gonna be taken away from the volume you should have dispensed. Watch out for droplets. The fifth thing is make sure you have proper pipetting rhythm. That's all about the motion of the ocean, right? So just make sure like when you're pipetting, you're doing everything smooth and steady. You're pipetting the same way. Cause like, as you saw earlier, if you pipette too fast or you, you know, you might not dispense the right amount of liquid. So just making sure that everything is done slowly and smoothly. So if we're pipetting here, here, you know, and pipe it back down and check for droplets. So that smooth rhythm is gonna lead to very consistent results. That's why you see sometimes different operators, even though they're all doing the same thing, that the results are different. Some techs run an assay and it's great, and other techs run an assay and it's it's not so great, even though they're running the same method. A lot of it has to do with the rhythm. The sixth thing is to make sure you use the correct pipette tip. So learning when to use a filter tip, when to use a non-filter tip, and the volumes are really important too. Could I pipette 15 microliters in a two to 200 microliter pipette tip? I could, but do I want to? Not really. You wanna make sure that the volume you select is within the range of the pipette tip that you're buying. If you can get a, a closer range, the better. So if I'm pipetting 30 microliters, say, I could use a two to 50 or a 20 to 200, but I would rather use the 50 microliter pipette because it's gonna be closer to that range. The tighter the range, the better. The last thing is to learn when to use forward pipetting or reverse pipetting. You're like, what is forward and reverse pipetting? Like, Ah, you don't really use reverse pipetting too much. Forward pipetting is the standard pipetting technique. You'd be surprised people even get this wrong. So with the pipette, there's two stops. First stop, second stop. When you're doing forward pipetting, you wanna go in to the first stop, aspirate up, and then when you dispense, you wanna go to the first stop and then second stop, and then come all the way back up. That's forward pipetting. If you're doing reverse pipetting, this is if you're working with extra viscous solutions. 99% of the time you're doing forward pipetting, but for the few percent of the time you're working with something extra viscous, you go all the way, extra viscous? 
viscous. Ask extra viscous, okay? You go all the way down to the second stop. So look, I'm depressed all the way. I go all the way down to the second stop. I go in, I pet, pet all the way up. So now I have excess volume in here. And then I just go down to the first stop. See that, how much volume I have left over? And then you could dispense this back into it if it's all the same thing, or you can eject the tip. So that's forward pipetting versus reverse pipetting. There's a few other like methods, but like we really don't need to get into that. That pretty much covers everything. Hopefully that was helpful for you. Hopefully you learned a thing or two. If you hire a new tech and you don't want to explain pipetting, for the 30th time, make them watch this video and <laughs> I saved you some time. But either way, if you found that helpful, you know, like, subscribe, follow, and I'll see you in the next one. About proper pipetting techniques. About proper pipetting techniques. I'll see you in the next video about, no, we just did proper pipetting techniques. Techniques. Techniques, whatever. Proper pipetting techniques. Proper, my cameraman's a smart ass. See you in the next one, where we'll be talking about how to pick a pipette tip. How to pick pipette tips. How to pick the right pipette tip for your assay. How to pick, no!